it's, you know, it's, it's all right, you know. You just remember things, you know. Somebody will say something, you think, oh, I can remember that. And yeah. All this, that, and the other. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were in the next street. Wake up, wake up. Hitler's come to bomb us. This is how, uh, how our young childhood was. So, when we were at war with Germany, the thing that always sticks in my mind is September the 4th, 1939, and I would be at the age of four years and nine months. Um, and it was, the sirens went. Uh, I, I never heard them. We were, were all in bed, me and my two brothers, three in a bed. Of course, you know, yeah. in those days we got nothing. Anyway, mum come running in. Wake up, wake up. Hitler's come to bombers. Of course, I, I started to cry, you know. Hitler's come to bombers. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Anyway, we all, come on, get out of bed, get dressed, put your coats on and all this, that and other. We all got ready and we thought, well, where are we going to go? My dad was going to put the air raid shelter up, but he just didn't want it up on the top. It was, his intentions were to dig a hole, put the shelter halfway in, and the soil he got out of the hole put it over the top to make it even better. Could have realised then it, it, it wasn't, it not started or anything. Of course I was crying and uh, we went outside and just stood there and a neighbour says, uh, what's the matter? Well, our shelter isn't up. We've not, we've not done it. Oh, come in out, come in out. Oh, thank you, because we all went traipsed around there. And all they'd got is three circled, no, no ends. And we, <laughs> we stood there, you know, it was yeah. freezing cold, and uh, if a bomb had dropped, we'd have <laughs> yeah. been gone, you know. The next morning, we would, we would go looking for shrapnel you know, and things like that. I can remember George, he, uh, he got, it was like a fin off a bomb. All complete, like, you know. Mm. Uh, and then he'd take me down Allington, that's over the canal bridge on Harvey Road, over the ridge is Allington, this side's Olmiston. Uh, and there was three houses, flattened, nothing. The only thing that was left is the two chimneys that went, because it's all brickwork, yeah. boy, and next door's there. And on the, I always remember this as well, on the chimney breast of one of the houses was a mirror. And it was still hanging, and it wasn't broken. And I thought, oh, funny, yeah. funny. But the blast from that house, those two houses, the blast took the complete roof off the, the house opposite. No roof, it just completely Completely off, yeah. Went to win three at school when I went as five. Uh, and another thing at all sticks in my mind is you used to get to get into class, take the register, 
And we all had gas masks in uh, little square boxes. Everybody had one of these, a gas mask. So the teacher used to come, right, right, show us your gas masks. Show us your hankies. Uh, my hanky. It was either t a tail off a shirt or a, a sheet cut up. Yeah. Of course, you had to hold the box and I just used to gingerly put that up, you know. Uh, it was a bit rough at times, you know, mm. you frightened. I was always, I was always frightened, really, you know. <laughs> bit of a coward, I suppose. Uh, all the way through school, uh, infants, juniors, and then senior school, I always seem to get on with everybody, you know, uh, Windsor Street. Uh, I was I was reasonably good at football, so we used to play for the Windham Street, and then you used to get, if you was any good, you used to get people at the junior school saying. So and so was coming up and yeah. play football for us, you know. And there's there's two, there's three of the people that go to the reunion was in the side, Wyndham Street, Junior School, yeah. Wyndham Street, and then Brighton Road. Yeah, I loved I loved school. I wasn't. Oh, I wasn't the best uh, at anything. The only thing I was good at was sport. <laughs> uh, sport, art. We often talk about the teachers now at a reunion. Can you remember? Oh yeah, he used to do so and so and so and so. Mr. McCausland, Jack Sherwin. You don't forget your teachers, do you? Well, we all remember them, you know. Of course, you get one or two people that, you know, school, school lads are not all that good. But I remember I went to Brighton Road School and the first day I had a fight <laughs> with a... Alan Salt, his name was. Uh, he, he said something about something, and I, I, he was picking on somebody, or, you know, because he was quite tall. Of course, I had, had to poke my nose in, didn't I? And uh, we got to fight him. I got one or two punches in, then all the lads split us up like, you know. Yeah. But, I had to go and see the headmaster. I, a, I think I got four whacks of the cane. I didn't do that again. Yeah. He used to, the cane used to... It used to be anywhere in the school. And if you'd done something wrong, Nelson, go and get the cane. Yes, sir. And I used to go to the classes. Have you got the cane, sir? No. Think Mr. Johnson's got it. Oh, I went to Mr. Johnson. Can I have the cane, Mr. Johnson? Certainly. Hold you on down. And he gave me a whack. <laughs> and I was only asking for the cane yeah. to go back to the class to get the cane. <laughs> He said, yes, all right, and he whacked me. I thought, well, I'll not say that again. Yeah, so uh, that was the war. Yeah, it, was a, it, was a, it wasn't a very nice time, you know. I didn't think it would ever stop, like you say, I thought. It's going to go on and on and on. And I thought, well, 
how long, how old am I going to be, but, you know, before it finishes. But luckily it ended in 45, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, at 21, the little, little brown on the low come through the door. National Service. And they give you a number about that big. Two double three one six nine six nine. That was mine. <laughs> the thing I remember about that, you, you you go in, get all your uniform, everything, same day. The sergeant said, go to the stores and ask them for these. Anyway, I got it. Well, I come out. But as I come out, if you saw a flat cap, you saluted it. You know. Anyway, I came out and I saw this flat cap. Oh, I went like that. He, he said, what the bloody hell are you saluting me for? I said, what? You're an officer, sir. He said, I'm the, I'm the regimental sergeant major. If you see a brass cap on a flat hat, he's not an officer. But, oh, anyway, I got out of that, came out again, and I thought I did it again. I, I did the same thing again. Because when you're there, you, you, you're doing everything. Yeah. You're getting your hair cut, right off, you know, getting all your gear, getting your bedding, all in one day. They said, do you want to go abroad or stop at home? I said, I'd, I'd like to go abroad. Right, look on the board tomorrow and you'll see where you're going. I thought, oh, I used to go to Gibraltar and places like that, you know. I looked at my name and I, I was posted to Germany, which is a home posting. It's not, they don't, it's not abroad, it's a home posting, you know, because it's that place. I thought, oh, okay. Anyway, I got there and then your training really begins then, you know, with your, with your marching and your, your rifle and all this, that and the other. Anyway, I got, uh, got demobbed and you think, oh, that's it, oh, finished. Letter comes through the door, you've got to be with the reserves for five years. That meant if there's a war yeah. or anything, I would be in again, yeah. you know, and I thought, oh no, but luckily nothing happened. And I hope it never happens. Got my first job at the January the 18th, 1950, at the co-op as an apprentice bricklayer. And he used to go, we used to build co-op shops. Oh, we, we must have done about 20 shop, co-op shops. Yeah. I built, I built, we built uh, the co-op shop at Alverston where the island is, Middleover, Duffield. That apprenticeship, it, it was the best years of my life. I, lo I loved it. They've got a co-op uh, funeral place on Normington Road on the corner of Leopold Street, I think it is. Uh, and a gang of us, they, we had to build fridges, a long row of fridges where they put the dead bodies in, you know. Oh. And I was working there and I was, I was doing the brickwork at the side and I saw this girl, she got a, a green suede miniskirt, a 
little black coat, black boots, uh, and she, she'd been shopping to the end shop, and as she come by, I said, oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> and she went, of course she went on. She was a hairdresser at uh, a shop about halfway down the Airport Street. And every morning she used to come to the shop. I think it was on the dinner hour when she, she came up. We got talking like this. I said, are, are you on your dinner hour now? She said, yeah. I said, you know, would you like to go for a drink? Well, no. Nah. I said, yeah, I, I, I've got a car, I can take you. Well, all right, and I'll just go and tell the, the boss, like, I said, only for half an hour, because I've, I've only got an hour dinner, but anyway, I took her to a pub, we had a drink, got talking. Can I see you again then? Oh, yeah, yeah, if you like. And that was it. But I lived in Derby and she lived in Hilton. So we used to, she used to get the bus from Hilton, I'd meet her in town. We always met in Ramby's doorway. I'd take her where, wherever, wherever we used to. We used to like going to uh, Breeden on the hill. There's a pub there, the, the Holly Bush. I didn't go there all that, all that often, but we used to go, we always used to seem to go for a drink, you know. She was a bit shy to begin with, believe it or not. <laughs> Um, and there was a, a posh restaurant at uh, Chaliston. I just forget the name of it. Anyway, I picked her up. I, I pulled in there. She said, what, what, what are we doing? I said, I've, I've booked a meal. Oh, I, I can't go in there. I said, why? I said, oh no, it's no. And I don't know what she thought that she wasn't good enough or what, yeah. or, you know, but she never did go in. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, anyway, we got married. 1970, I better get this right, answer. 1972, was it? Yeah. So we just, where are you going? I said, I don't know. We're just going to get on and go. We, had, we ended up in Yarmouth. Nowhere to stay, so we had to, we had to book in a big hotel. Cost us a small fortune. First thing we did in the morning when we had breakfast, we opened up. And out. Then we went, we went to, um, a motel. I thought it was a motel there, look, let's try there. And it was lovely, really nice. But the thing is, I signed in. Jane Nelson, Mrs. Nelson. I looked a bit further up. John Nelson, Scotland. Air. Well, we've got relations in Scotland, in Air, and there's two John Nelsons. So I thought, well, it's got to be related. So I went all around, but I couldn't find them. But strange that was. Yeah, it was quite nice, that was. Of honeymoon, you see. Everything was lovey-dovey and, yeah, nice. Might well, still lovey-dovey now. We don't argue. I don't think we do. No. No. She's 
absolutely brilliant. Couldn't have done better. I put, we, we put in for a council house uh, in Derby and they said, no, you can't because you live in Hilton. I said, no, I own, I'm only lodging there like till... Uh, and they said, all right, we'll, we'll allow you. We came in. Of course, we got nothing, you know. Got to save up and get this and get that. I got a mate round the corner. I used to work with a co-op, and it used to have a big hedge right the way across the front. And I went, I went to work one day. Come back, the hedge was out and gone. He pulled all my hedge out for me, because he knew I'd build a wall. You know, being a bricky. So. Uh, we built, I built a wall, and I built some hotels, and I did a patio at the back. Started to do the decorating. Yeah, we really loved it. Then we had, uh, guess who? <laughs> yeah. It was really Emily Jane. She was a cracker. Still is a cracker, really. Yeah. But uh, having said that, Emily Jane, she only used to get called Emily Jane when she'd done something wrong. Emily Jane, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we've been here ever since. Forty odd years. Oh. And I've still not done everything I want to do. <laughs> yeah. I would hate to move now. Yeah. Oh. The stuff I've got. I was like my dad. He wouldn't he would throw nothing away. My mum my mum used to say, why don't you? It might come in. It might come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I suppose I have to go out of here in the box. I'm, I'm not moving in there now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my mum and dad, you know how they say, oh the in-laws. They were absolutely brilliant. My dad, he was a smashing bloke. But I just had, when we were stopping there, like, with Emily, she was, uh, do this, Gloria, do that. No, do that. And I just said, I don't want to be awkward, but can you just let Glory do what she wants? Did you hear what he said? And the dad said, he's right. You're poking your nose in, keep it out. And from that day, we, we were like that, me and her dad. Yeah, he was a great bloke. She, she was, her mum was nice, really, but she yeah. just, but she's backed off and we go on well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. She always used to feed me with a plate like that. Always a full plate. Because sometimes she, Gloria's the same. Yeah. And I, I just say to you, just like your mum. <laughs> it's a standing joke, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, I've been lucky in life, I suppose.